One major question that Quartz Composer users have had in the transfer from Leopard to Snow Leopard is how to use OpenCL. It's a whole new language. Most people have no clue how to use it. There's some great example patches in the developer folder, but one really awesome thing is that the Apple Developer Connection put together some great example compositions to show us how to use it even better. Uh, right here on the Apple Developer Connection, and if you don't belong, by all means join. You're going to have access to all kinds of great sample code, uh, beta forum. You come over here, uh, run a search on all kinds of sample code right off the bat, just start downloading, looking through it all. Come over here to this OpenCL one, download it, and you're going to have some great sample code that's been a lot of the stuff that people have been talking about on forums right now, uh, not really sure how to use. I'm going to open up this 2D smoke uh, example really quick. This is a 2D fluid uh, sim. It's done by Apple and done well. Uh, you can see the uh, fluid sim happening right here off of the text. It's very similar to what uh, people have been posting on the forum, but it has the benefit of being the uh, you know, proverbial Apple example. That's not really what I'm most interested in right now. Uh, let's see, I mean, don't save. We'll come over here. But let's look at a couple other ones because there's some really outstanding stuff here. Uh, let's look at this page's jiggle. This is actually really awesome. It's basically something set up to look like a manual where you can actually flip through the pages. Uh, this is some pretty severe warping going on here. Uh, you can see that you're seeing an image on the backside. Um, you know, maybe this is something that someone can take and streamline out a little bit more, but it's a heck of an example. Uh, what I'm really most interested in is extrusion. I find things like taking a 2D image and extrapolating some kind of 3D mesh normals uh, very interesting. I was very happy to see a text extrusion example using OpenCL right here in this uh, zip download. So let's open it up and see what it looks like out of the box. Right here, we can see a preview window with our uh, text image. And then we can see what's happening when it's run through a vertex displacement and rendered with an OpenCL mesh. I think that's pretty nice. One thing that's really kind of clever about this setup is that they've added some CI effects into here um, to prep the image. They've run a, a crystallized filter, which is pretty cool for getting that blocky effect that's in some ways very similar to the Kinema 3D uh, faceted effect, but a little bit different as well. Um, there's a kaleidoscope effect, which is pretty good for just you know pure art. Uh, an edge work effect. Uh, not really getting a lot out of it. Oh, there you go. Pretty sharp. This one looks cool on a video feed. Um, zoom blur. That's really cool for... Um, you know, I have to say, I don't really think it's looking that good on this string. But this really does look very attractive on some other image sources. Uh, one interesting thing about this as well is that they ran uh, a pre-blur and a post-blur inside of the Quartz uh, Composer patch. Uh, so that basically they're pre-blurring before they send to all of these CI and then they're doing another blur route afterwards. And that really does a lot to smooth it out. That's a very nice setup. It does a lot to um, tame some artifacts that you see and get some nice attractive looks. What I wanted to do was kind of strip a little bit of that out, change it up a little bit, and make something very similar to the rut or the Kinema 3D depth bomb um, extrusion example that I've made. Uh, 
let's open that up. Hopefully here it's here in my recent comments or my uh, my recent compositions open. Uh, one thing that's really awesome about this is that it worked with shadows. Um, some, you know, basically other extrusion methods that I've been trying have not been working with shadows 100%. Uh, yeah, without getting too deep into that, there's probably some issues with the shadows in general. Um, but this is about the best I've seen work. Um, you can see that basically what I did was to come in here, uh, and put a video feed straight in to a sprite that's sized to the rendering destinations. Um, and then I came out here, and one thing that was really important in this setup, um, at least that I noticed, was to make an, a very explicit uh, note of the pixel width and the pixel height. Um, every time that I started trying to make it zero by zero, or not, uh, you know, just force the pixel width by height, I was getting some pretty crazy crashes. Uh, in general, be careful with uh, this, apparently, when you're hovering over nodes, doing different stuff like that. Um, it's a little tricky. Um, the, the composition is very stable when it's running, but it's just a little unstable when hovering over some of these these uh, nodes to evaluate the mesh. Um, I went ahead and reintroduced the pedestal that had been turned off. Um, I think that the pedal had maybe been turned off because of this. Uh, you can see that a shadow will shine through to the back side of a sprite, which isn't something that you would normally expect a shadow to do. Um, what the heck, I, I kept it in there because I thought it was attractive. I went ahead and added a, a Gaussian gradient here um, to make it look like it's kind of, uh, you have a base that's fading off into the distance. I also tried to tweak the uh, shadows to where it wouldn't feed off into the edge of the sprite and create an ugly look uh, too much. One thing that's really cool about this is working over that blur uh, patch to smooth it out the image or make it rougher. This is basically with no blur. This is adding more and more blur. Now I went ahead and added a Z translation to this. I went ahead and turned uh, the displacement into something that you can control as well, and even reverse so you can get an opposite uh, displacement and then re, uh, re shift the translation of the Z uh, to something that's, that works. And you can flick the shadows off and on, as well as the pedestal. So it's kind of versatile. I'm happy to see something like this working in OpenCL. Uh, there's probably some more tweaking that could be done with it, but all in all, it's great to see some sample code like this. Um, I hope this explained some things for you, led you down some roads of thought. I'm going to be posting this example composition up uh, over at Kiname in the, examples, the example uh, repository, and I'll be posting it on my own site as well.